sing, sing. Everybody start to sing. La di da, oh, oh, now you're singing with a swing. Welcome to the Singers Unlimited podcast a production of WBGO Studios. I'm Michael Bourne. We're going to be listening back on these shows through the WBGO archives. Some great interviews, some great performances from across the years of Singers Unlimited. I want to be like that gal on the river Who sang her songs to the ships passing by She had the goods and how she could deliver The Lord of That's a great song of the Brothers Gershwin that is rarely done. Although Ella Fitzgerald sang the Lorelei just before Mac the Knife in Berlin on the famous night. And that's the song from a musical that was set in Berlin in the 20s about a gangster who gets knocked on the head and turns into another person. You know all about this? You know this behind I the song? I know about it. Pardon my English. Yes. 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 And, and it's got nothing to do with the show. Oh, and well, in the, the the songs, I mean, none of none of them were really that popular except the Lorelei. And thanks to Ella, and that is my favorite Ella album, Ella in Berlin. So that's how I know Lorelei. But also, isn't it a pity? Is from part of my English. Daryl in Newark. Oh. Daryl Sherman is joining me. I don't know how many times you've been on the show, but hello again. Who's you, counting? You didn't wear the hat, though. I love the hat on the front cover of. Lost in a crowded place. It was raining today. <laughs> so you should have worn a hat. No. Not that one. So you know this song from the Ella record, The Lorelei. Oh, absolutely. That's how I learned it. I love that there's a train from somewhere to somewhere along the Rhine. And I was on this train. And there's a giant sign as you, as you curve on the Rhine. And it said, here's where the Lorelei lurked and sang <laughs> to, well she'd sing to sailors and then she'd eat them yeah so it's not exactly the most romantic woman of song the lorelei well and even the words i mean i want to be just like that other trollop exactly i've never sung trollop before but i was even more inspired after years of 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 playing Lorelei every time the wonderful dear Barbara Lee, who we miss a lot, yeah. would come in because she was so wonderful about coming in. Like, for instance, all those years I was at the Waldorf Astoria and I would always get her up to sing. And I mean, imagine that being a sit in song. Wow. But just to see, you know, Barbara had this regal look about her. Right. And suddenly she would get to the part, I'm treacherous and she'd go yeah yeah and then the, you know i'd like to bite my initials at a sailor's neck well she had her way with it and i had my way with mine <laughs> if we never meet again i'll have a rose to remember the snows of december will bring you back to me if we never meet again that's a song composed by Louis Armstrong if we never meet again it's from a new album called uh, lost in a crowded place and I am meeting again with Dale Sherman singers unlimited players unlimited you do both is it hard it's hard to be a hyphenate, as you call us. Yes. And yet, um, I get so many advantages of, uh, you know, if, if, if the band runs out on me, I can still play and sing something, or I can just play. And um, with, with uh, a piano, I have an orchestra at my fingers. If my fingers could only do the bidding, I would like them to. It's interesting when you, sometimes when you hear a hyphenate, You'll hear much more fingering, as it were, much more, many more notes when it's not when backing up the vocal. When the vocal starts, then it becomes more meat and potatoes sometimes. Although somebody like Nat Cole could just do it 
anyway. Well, I was going to say, as particularly I've grown into the songs, and that really is what it's about. I started playing at a young age. My father would, uh, he was a trombone player, but he encouraged me to, to sit at the piano, form triads, and, and sing the melody line, first play the melody line. And uh, I found my own way with accompanying myself, although I did study classical piano and some, you know, pop and, and jazz playing. But, of course, Blossom Deary is one of the chief exponents of this, having a conversation with myself and the commentary and... Uh, what Blossom played was always a miniature portrait. It wasn't just a bunch of chord changes and the coloration. There's just so much involved. And I feel that um, in some cases, but, oh, particularly in my case, with this higher, lighter sound, which I can, you know, I can do some things to amplify my sound and I can work harder to, to get a, a wider range. But you're you know, your voice box is your voice box. Your larynx is what you're born with. And I can play percussively on the piano, and I like to play in different registers of the piano. I like to paint. I'm a painter on the piano. And lots of times, it's I start almost with tabula rasa, say, okay, here's a song. Let me just play some chords, and let me sing, and let me see what happens. And um, you can get spoiled doing that, and then you have to... Uh, you have to ro- rope yourself in when you've got a bass player and a guitar player. And, of course, that gives you such a wonderful foundation. But then you have to do everything the same way. <laughs> There's a lot More that goes or into it. I mean, it depends. Yeah. On, you know, you, you've worked forever with, with Boots Malice and playing the bass, right? Yes, and, and <laughs> with lots of guitar players. But for the most part with James Chirillo, who they are really my core group. And... and, and because they understand that I'm having a conversation and I'm letting them in on it. How okay. nice of me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How nice of me to let them in on it. But it takes time to learn. Uh, they'll learn, oh, you know, okay, she's going to leave space for me to fill here. But they also know, oh, it's Daryl. She may forget or she may get involved in saying something else here. So we need to know to just listen and watch. In this conversation. Whose yeah. changes are the most fun to play? Whose are the most challenging to play? That's the chord structure of a song. Cole Porter, I remember a pianist talking about how wonderful the sevenths he composed. And I thought, <laughs> you're missing somehow the point of his songs. But but is that true? Um. Well, actually, when you asked me that, the first... The first uh, composer who comes to mind is Harold Arlen because he was a pianist and he did think in, you know, 11ths and and 13ths and he had a flavor. And I suppose Cole Porter's songs, some of them also have a flavor, but I don't think so much in terms of, in my improvisation, I would tend to improvise more on the melody than I would on the chord changes. Johnny Mercer, he wrote with something like 75, I tried to count one, something like 75 different composers. Oh, um, Maybe more, even. Robert Kimball, when he was putting together that, you know, mega book of the complete lyrics of Johnny Mercer, that, that that's a misnomer, because there's no complete. To this day, he still finds lead sheets and, and, and musicians. He loved musicians. He loved, he loved wordplay. Uh, I don't think uh, we've, we've exhausted all, all of his partners, all of his collaborators. And yeah, Johnny Mercer and Harold Arlen, there was something special there. You were talking about Mercer's feeling for jazz, but I mean, Harold Arlen, Harold Arlen mm-hmm. uh, he's deep in the blues, really, more than almost Absolutely. anybody. Yes. Gro- growing up as the son of a cantor somehow, there's that, there's that, that connection. He's into the hooey. Uh, all, hooey. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, Cab Calloway talks about that, about learning the hidey ho from from a cantor, you know, chanting. And and, and, and back and forth again. But like somehow Harold yeah. Ireland and, and Johnny Mercer together. Oh, yes. I mean, and, and Harold probably gave Johnny the inspiration to start a song with My Mama Done Told Me. How do yeah. you get away with that? Yeah, it's great. I gotta go back there to find that blossom fair. I always dream of. Cause with you, who could be a failure? My first love is you. That's a song of Duke Ellington. And that's Daryl Sherman singing about a flower. It is a flower, or is it a bush? Oh, no, the whole story of this azalea. Oops, excuse me. Yes? You like that note? I like that. It's a D. All right. Is that even though Duke Ellington wrote both the music and the words, he wrote it inspired by Louis Armstrong, and it was Louis who recorded it on, on their album together. And... Ellington uh, may have read Lewis's book. It's, I think, in, in Swing That Music, where he writes about living in New Orleans and the fragrances and the magnolia and the moss-covered trees and the, 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 the pomps of, and circumstance of the church. All of these images the cypress swamp that are in this song were right out of Lewis's own description of his love for New Orleans. Okay. And that's what I love about this song. Other than the fact or the question, what rhymes with azalea? Carol Sloan, who wrote the notes, the wonderful notes, and I'm thrilled and I'm proud to drop her name, she came up with paraphernalia. Okay. <laughs> okay, you were just in New Orleans a while ago talking about uh, Pops as a composer. Uh, you've got a couple of Pops yes. songs on this album. Actually, several, many, actually, yes, really. Yes, because the album was recorded the previous year when I was at the Satchmo Summer Fest. Okay. Uh, so I, I have a very wonderful affection for that city, the Crescent City as well. You're from Rhode Island. Have you ever sung that song? That's a famous song. You come from Rhode Island. Rhode Island is famous for you. I sing it when I go back there. <laughs> but not otherwise? You not don't, you otherwise. Don't, you don't whip it out in Japan, all your gigs in Japan? You don't, in the, I, Rhode I, Island. I usually do not get a request for that one there. I mean, that, you know, the, the, they're, they're conoscenti, but not particularly that one. Um, but... Uh, I do love the song. It's a very silly song. And it's kind of fun when I go home and, and we all sing it to, to, to each other. And uh, is, is I get you... to sing it. I get to sing it with Mike Renzi playing the piano. Okay. In fact, uh, uh, I'm going back to Rhode Island soon to uh, play in some places in Newport. Okay. Uh, where Mike is, is, is back living. Oh, and, okay. Uh, so... We would do Rhode Island is famous for us there. You, um, you play in Japan, like I was saying. What's 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 the your favorite request for "By Mir Mister Shane" is something else, <laughs> which is already hard to say. Buy me meet Asian. Yes. Buy me meet Asian. Asian. Yeah, we'll okay. never forget that request and the way that that was written out. Of all the chops uh, I've known, I have known some. How about that? No, no. Anyway, no. 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 You could write. Have you ever written lyrics? I'm so glad you asked. Oh, I've written. I've written lyrics mostly to my own songs. But right. uh, a, a favorite saxophone player who I got to know early on in in my years in New York, uh, he was playing with Buddy Rich at the time, and I was. This was like, you know, fifty five hotel jobs ago. I wasn't playing the Waldorf then. I was playing the next street down on Lexington Avenue, a hotel at that time called the Belmont Plaza. 
and Buddy Rich's orchestra was playing the Empire Room in the Waldorf, and the band was coming over to to my joint because the drinks were cheaper. And this was when I was this, this was in the hyphenate day when I was doing solo and singing and playing, and they kept telling me, "Oh, Turk's got to hear you." Turk's got, his name is Turk Morrow, and he was kind of a ringleader of the band. He was one of the older guys in the band. And uh, we became friends because he, he started coming in and, and kind of digging what I, what I was doing. And uh, um, I got to, thank goodness, because of this friendship, I got to see a lot of Buddy Rich performances. And when he was doing his, uh, one of his first albums, he was thinking about songs to, to, to work on and, and I was playing with him at the time. We were fiddling through some things. I wasn't going to be the piano player on the date, but just helping out. And he said, gee, I'd love to play Tangerine, Johnny Mercer's lyric, but, oh, so many other people do it. So another musician who was there said, gee, well, why don't you do what Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie have done? Uh, Improvise on it, make it melodic, change the name, and then you got a song. So, he made it swing, he changed the color, and named it after himself. His name is Turk. He named it Turquoise. Let's have it. (laughs) But I had the nerve to persist and show you. Then you began to assist a glow. You showed and your face could replace all phrases verbally. I looked at the sky and it was clear to see Magnificent turquoise just for me Finally the time for romance had come to be Daryl Sherman I'm longing for the day When we can fly away To the land of just we two Excursions every night It's just a one The land of just we two. Words and music, right? Yes. Of uh, Daryl Sherman. That's from a new album called Lost in a Crowded Place. And it's you at a piano, although the scenery behind you is a train station. Is it Grand Central? It's not any train station. And if you're going to be lost in a crowded place, you might as well be in Grand Central Station with a big red hat. Okay. This, this whole album actually started from that red hat. Okay, and, and a red it dress was from was Lord and Taylor. Uh huh. My sister and I went there. It was our little sister thing to do. We tried on all the hats. Uh, we ended up buying plain ones, but we took pictures. They ended up on Facebook, and everyone said, "Daryl, that hat is you. You better get it. Get that hat." So I went back and got it on sale. And then I thought, well, what am I going to do with a huge hat like this? I better create a reason. And voila. An album cover. An album cover. In a dress as red and, and, <laughs> and, and obviously wearing whip. Did you check out different lipstick till, until it matched just right? Oh, um, actually, Eric Stephen Jacobs, who put me into Grand Central Station, figured out all that stuff. He was wonderful. He, he took the photo. So Daryl Sherman a- grew up in Rhode Island, right? You grew up in Rhode <laughs> Island. Oh, I did. And I went to the University of Rhode Island. And believe me, Rhode Island roots run deep. Even though I don't sing, Rhode Island is famous for you all the time. But you did record with Dave McKenna, also from? From my hometown of Woonsocket, Rhode Island. Absolutely. And yes. Scott Hamilton is from there, right? A lot of us. And uh, Room Bobby- Full of Blues is from there. Yes. And Bobby Hackett. Okay. Small state. Seth MacFarlane, a, a family guy, is and yes. now is a crooner, is also from, or at least he studied at the Rhode Island School of Design, the famous art school. Up there. And well, and the reason Scott Hamilton was in Rhode Island is because his father taught there. Okay. Lots of connections. Lots of. It, it, and Barbara Carroll, who I'm going to talk about, or I'm going to play in a little bit. Yeah. Is from not far. In fact, when I when you first enter Winsocket. From Providence, there's Route 146, and there's one sign if you're going to Winsocket. That's one one end of 146, and then the other end of 146 is Worcester, Massachusetts, Massachusetts, where Barbara Carroll is from. Okay. okay. Well, we're in Newark, and uh, 
for years. <laughs> I wanted, I've always wanted to ask, and I didn't ask earlier, but you played for years the, the actual piano of Cole Porter when you played these gigs at the Waldorf regularly. I did. Now, were, were, were on that piano, Did you were there like little stains where the champagne glass was sitting or scratches or something? Oh, uh, there were scratches and dents all over the piano. <laughs> but, uh, um, and it was... Uh, it was it was supposed to be in his suite from what from what the story is uh, for for many years until it found its way down into the cocktail terrace where I played it for many years and then it got scratched by all the it, I called it Poland where we were because the warring nations being the two big function rooms where the banquet uh, staff were moving tables and chairs all the time and, and crashing into the piano. Uh, those are the stripes that the piano had to wear. Nothing from Cole, I'm afraid to say. Let's have that song. Irving Caesar wrote the words, right? With with Barbara Carroll wrote the uh, music? She used to tell me how Irving was such a nuisance. He would chase her around the room. But uh, this is a... It, it's really kind of a, almost sounds like it should be in a film noir or it's a real period piece particularly with this 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 uh, line the phone is near I'll put a dime in that really dates it but it has a je ne sais quoi about it that I absolutely love lost in a crowded place I don't see one familiar face here Might just as well be empty space here Lost in a crowded place Daryl Sherman, thanks for bopping by. (laughs) I'm thrilled to be here. Singers Unlimited is produced for podcasts by Billy Robinson for WBGO Studios. Recordings engineered by Corey Goldberg. I'm Michael Bourne. Subscribe to the Singers Unlimited podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Find out more at WBGO.org. This has been a WBGO Studios production. To learn more about WBGO Studios award-winning podcasts, special concerts, live streams, and more, visit WBGO.org slash studios.